Yesterday I went to Coinstar. That's how my life's going. <laughs> yeah, you never go to Coinstar when things are going good. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I ran out of all the regular money. I, I think this symbol looks like a coin. I'm going to try it out when I get there. I think this symbol looks like a coin. I always have to ask the question, why am I going there in the first place? Because, yeah, I have all this change, but count it. With these hands? <laughs> Who do you think I am? I'm gonna take my bucket of life savings to the grocery store. Every time I go there, there's a line. Not the best place for small talk. <laughs> hey man, how's your day going? About as crappy as yours, I see. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever used the Coinstar machine, but nothing on earth needs to be that loud just to count change. <laughs> As soon as you hit the button, all you hear is <laughs> You look up, the whole store is just staring at you. You're like, oh, I'm not broke. <laughs> I'm donating this money. <laughs> That's right off. Oh, I am so broke right now. <laughs> A lot of people like to play the lotto when it's $500 million. Then when it's 10, who are these snobs? <laughs> walking into their corner store like, hmm, ten million dollars. <laughs> Such a paltry amount. <laughs> I don't know how that could change my life at all. <laughs> oh dear, look at the time. My shift work at McDonald's is about to begin. <laughs> and then Benny Hanna has the cockiest chefs in all the restaurant them. Those guys walk around like their name is Benny Hanna. Authentic Japanese food made by Raul. <laughs> Every time I go there, I act like I've never seen somebody make food before. I'm like, oh my god, is that dude chopping carrots? <laughs> a volcano made out of what? <laughs> Everything's going good till the chef starts eyeing a girl, starts making her rice hearts, gives it to him, gives her a shrimp. You're like, damn it, I'm not paying for shrimp. <laughs> so I don't worry about it. This one's on the honor. <laughs> <laughs> Hate underdog stories. They all BS. People try to tell you stuff to make you feel good. People are like, oh man, don't worry about it. You know Bill Gates? He dropped out of college. i uh, like, nope. He dropped out of Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> not community college. <laughs> dad was the richest lawyer in all of Seattle. You see, all he did was take his dad's millions of dollars and create Microsoft. Started from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> now we're here. <laughs> it's good to be alive. We have the Google. I can't remember the last time I used my brain. <laughs> What's two plus two? Whatever Google tells me. Just one question is, what does Google want? I know what Microsoft wants, all my money. But Google's a little different. Google's like, hey, 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 put your money away. I just want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Google likes what it sees. <laughs> Uber is an app where a stranger will pick you up in their car for money. <laughs> and we trust it because it's an app. Nothing creepy about a guy that wants to be a cab driver for fun. <laughs> I didn't think you chose to be a cab driver. I thought life pulled you to the side. It was like, you just drive cabs now. <laughs> Uber is something that, it only exists because of technology. Because this is Uber without the app. Hey! Hey, man, where you going? Well, I'm about to take you anywhere, baby. But keep letting cab. a lot of Netflix. A lot. I watch six seasons of The Office in two days. Because I'm a man. You ever been in a deep Netflix trance? And it's like, one more episode, one more episode, one more episode, one more episode, one more episode. It's 6.30 in the morning, I gotta go to work at 7. I don't care, I'm watching the finale. 
Netflix is asking me all these questions like, are you still watching? You know how I roll on Netflix, see my time, see my time. I'm just sitting there in my apartment, my left eye is twitching, I don't know what's going on right now. There's a part where Michael Scott, the boss, waved goodbye to everybody. And I waved back. <laughs> I have a neighbor that owns a domesticated wolf. That's a real thing. From far away, it looks like a husky. And then you get a little bit closer, and your body seizes up. <laughs> and it looks like a husky that's on a pack with the devil. And every time I'm talking to my friend, he's like, you need to calm down, because the wolf can sense fear. <laughs> no, yeah, that is correct. The wolf is sensing the correct emotion and probably the smell of piss. <laughs> And you know somebody that owns a wolf, that changes your whole perspective on the world. Now every time I see somebody walk in a pit bull, all I can think of is pussy. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna for the wolf? Bring that cute little pit bull over here. All right, my neighbor looks so cool. I wanted some of that coolness, man. I went and researched what it takes to own a wolf. You red flag, she's a big one. It says if you own a wolf, don't get sick. Because the wolf will take it as a sign of weakness. <laughs> then challenge you as leader of the pack. <laughs> I know that I want a wolf. <laughs> I tell you what I do. I want to join a wolf pack. I ain't talking about no hangover bullshit. I'm talking about an actual pack of wolves. I know they accept humans. I've seen the documentary Jungle Book many times. <laughs> and I'm a grown man. I'm bringing grown man skills to the table. Joke. <laughs> I went on Amazon the other day. I bought like a hundred condoms for ten dollars. <laughs> now I'm under way too much pressure. I'm not gonna feel like a winner when the expiration date comes and I still have one hundred condoms left. <laughs> and Amazon has this thing now where if you order certain items, you get a reminder email. So in my inbox, I got something like. Hey, just to let you know, but 99.99% of people reordered by now. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> and if you don't respond, it gets real passive aggressive. So, hey there, buddy. That last order was a bit much for you. <laughs> How about a three pack? <laughs> so now I'm doing anything I can to get rid of condoms, man. I'm doing my dishes. I'm putting condoms on my hands. I'm taking showers. I'm putting condoms on the shower caps. <laughs> you wouldn't know it, but red condoms make the most comfortable slippers. <laughs> Every step is like a gentle massage on the feet. I got 99 condoms.